This happened back when I was in college. It was just after my freshman year had ended. I was driving back home for the summer, which was pretty far away. The school that I went to was about a 10-hour drive from home. I hoped to make it home in one day, but things did not go as smoothly as I would have liked. Originally, I was going to leave the day after my final exams from my dorm room. I didn't have too much stuff and could fit it all in my car just fine. However, my exams finished a little bit earlier than I'd expected, and I had the thought to leave just right then. I didn't really like my roommate that much, so I thought the sooner I left, the better. I left that day instead of waiting until the next. The drive was really long, but mostly just on freeways. By the time it was 10 o'clock at night, I found myself with still three more hours to drive. That's when I started getting extremely sleepy. The more I drove, the harder it was for me to stay awake. I knew that I wouldn't be able to make it home that night and would need to stop and rest. At that time, I didn't have enough money for a hotel room. I mean, I technically did have enough, but I didn't want to spend it. Being a college student, I didn't have much money and I hadn't started my summer job yet. I figured that it wouldn't be a big deal if I slept for a couple of hours in my car. I'm not very big, and I could almost stretch out in the back. I put into my phone a search for rest area. I was hoping that there would be a place coming up soon that I could stop at, and thankfully, there was one just a mile up the road. I did my best to stay awake until then. I opened my windows, turned the radio up, and drank some water. None of that really seemed to help me much, but I was able to make it to the rest area. When I pulled in, it wasn't quite what I was hoping for. I've been hoping to see a sort of large rest area with a decent-sized building and gas station, something with a lot of other people. What I saw instead was a very quiet and small rest area with just a little building that was probably just bathrooms and a couple of vending machines. There were only about three other cars parked along the long line of parking spaces. I drove down to the far end and parked my car. I was facing a small grassy area and beyond that was surrounded by woods. This area was kind of creepy to me, but I was far too tired to really care that much. Most of my things were in the trunk or my front passenger seat, but I did have a few bags of clothes in the back seat. I took a couple of pieces of clothing and covered the windows, but I was unable to cover the front window. Instead, I took a blanket and created a wall by hanging it over the front seats. Time I was done doing that, I laid down and fell asleep almost immediately. My original plan had been to sleep for just a few hours. I didn't set an alarm or anything, but sleeping in the car, I figured I wouldn't be asleep for very long. I remember that when I woke up, it was still dark out. I didn't know what time it was and I looked at my phone and saw that it was 1 a.m. Things were completely silent, but the silence was quickly interrupted by a noise. It sounded like footsteps that were very close by. I leaned over to the window my head was closest to, which was the backseat driver's side. When I looked out, I didn't see anything. I heard the footsteps, and they sounded like they were on the other side of my car, so I moved over to look out of that side. As I looked out that side, I saw there was only one other car in the parking lot in the rest stop at the complete other end. I didn't see anybody, though. Things just seemed a little bit strange. I saw from behind the blanket I had put up, somebody walked by the front end of my car. Now my heart started racing. There wasn't really a reason why somebody would be walking by my car all the way at this end of the rest stop. I closed my eyes and was completely still. Then there was a knock at my driver's window. I almost jumped up, but I didn't. I stayed there and was silent. All I wanted was whoever was there to go away. After they knocked, things were completely silent for a few seconds. Then, whoever was there tried opening the driver's door. It was locked, and they went over and tried my rear driver's side door. I had my keys next to me in the back, and I was now wide awake. At this point, I realized that I should drive away but in going to the front seat, whoever was there would see me for sure. Then there was a loud bang on my window right by my head. I tore the blanket down, dividing the back seat and the front, and then hopped into the driver's seat of the car. 
I tried not to look out of the window, but then saw a man jump right in front of it. I didn't get a good look at him, but he was right next to my car, and it was terrifying. I started up the engine, and as soon as my car was running, I put it into reverse and backed up. When I did, the man started running alongside of me. I put the car into drive and sped away back onto the road. The man was unable to reach me again. I drove all the way home after that, only stopping to get gas once. I was wide awake the entire time. After my experience, I ended up getting home at 5 o'clock in the morning, which was a really odd time to arrive back, but I was able to get some more sleep after that. Not really sure who the guy was messing around with my car or what he wanted. I'm really glad I don't have to find out, though. One time, a few months ago, I was driving my car late at night. I was on a quiet road and driving about five miles per hour above the speed limit. The road had just two lanes, one for traffic going the way I was, and the other was for oncoming traffic. I was just trying to get home and listening to the radio. I remember at one point I came up on a smaller pickup truck driving up ahead. When I approached it, I slowed down because the truck was driving much slower than I was, but soon things got kind of ridiculous. The speed limit on this road was 50 miles per hour, and we were going almost 30 miles per hour. I remained behind the truck, going very slowly for two or three minutes. Then, I decided that I would pass the truck. Maybe something was wrong with it, and it couldn't go very fast. I wasn't in a big hurry or anything, but going that much slower than the speed limit, I lost patience. I pulled out into the oncoming lane of traffic. Luckily, these roads were really quiet, and nobody was coming in the other direction at all. I started to pass the truck easily, but before I could clear it, the truck started speeding up. I was going about 55, and soon the truck was going at least 55 as well. This made me really angry. I sped up even more and was finally able to clear the truck. Now that I was in front of him, but unfortunately the truck was now right on my tail. His headlights were so close, I wondered if his truck would bump into my car. It looked like a man was driving, but I couldn't really see all that well. Luckily, the truck didn't bump mine. Still, as I was going now 60 miles per hour, which was 10 over the limit, he was still right behind me. We both drove like this for maybe about a minute when I saw that he hadn't let up at all. I decided that it would be best to just let him pass. I had to drive on this road for maybe another five miles or so, and there weren't any other roads to turn on to in the immediate area, so I decided to just pull over. I put on my hazard lights and moved over to the side of the road. As soon as I did, the truck behind me did as well. Now I was really mad. Was this guy angry with me for trying to pass him? And now he was following me? He had been going so slow, anybody would have done the same thing. I did. I kept slowing down, and my car came to a stop. The truck did as well. We both sat there in our vehicles for a few seconds. I was angry, and I guess I was feeling like a tough guy. I decided I was going to get out and talk to the driver of the truck and ask him what his problem was. I opened up my door and started walking towards the truck. When I did... I held out my hands as if to say, what's your problem? I remember that as I was doing that and I was barely in the street, I saw the truck suddenly start to move. It was then that I realized this guy was going to try to run me over. The truck was driving straight for me. I ran back but was only able to take about three steps. I then jumped and actually landed on the hood of my own car. The truck barely missed me and luckily didn't hit my car either. After he had missed, I saw him slamming on the brakes up ahead. I quickly jumped into my vehicle and started driving away. The guy in his truck then started following me again as soon as he got the chance. He was once again right on my tail but driving more recklessly than before. I was driving on the street but then went to the far side of the road. The man swerved after me but went too far and his truck ended up going off the road and into the ditch, the sort of big ditch. The truck didn't flip or anything, but it was enough to get him stuck. I kept driving and then called the police when I was a good distance away. They ended up locating the man, and he got a ticket for reckless driving, but I was unable to prove that he tried to run me over. 
I just hope I never see him again. Foreign. This happened many, many years ago. I was driving my car home one night. I was going through a city that I was sort of unfamiliar with and was about an hour and a half away from home. At this point in the drive, I was not on the highway but a quieter road. I had just driven through a seemingly small town. Things were very quiet. It was late, and I had only seen a couple of other cars out on the road. I was traveling about 35 miles per hour and saw a stop sign coming up. Things were very dark in this section of the road, with no street lights or anything surrounding. The road was mostly grassy fields and a few trees or woods here and there. At the stop sign that I was approaching, it was a four-way intersection. I slowed down and was just coming to a complete stop. As my car was almost stopped, I suddenly heard a knocking coming from my passenger side window. I looked over, startled. When I did, I saw a man standing there. He was sort of teal, and I couldn't really see his face, but I could see him knocking. It really took me by surprise, and I was wondering who this guy was and what he wanted. I could see him motioning for me to roll down the window, so I did, although I had a bad feeling about it. The man spoke, telling me that he really needed a ride, and his car had broken down. He told me that he promised he wasn't dangerous or anything, and asked me multiple times for a ride without me even saying anything. To me, it just came across as really sketchy. I started to shake my head and say no to the guy, and I could tell that he knew I didn't want to. However, my window was still open. The man began to reach inside and said please, and that he was desperate. It didn't change my mind though, and I hit the gas and drove away. He was forced to let go of my car and I left him standing there in the middle of the road. The whole experience was just really strange. As I drove away, I wondered if I had done the right thing, or if maybe he just did need a ride. My instincts were telling me no, and the way that the man reached inside of my car aggressively made him seem anything but innocent. I definitely felt confident with my decision, and I went on with my drive. Thankfully, the roads got better, and I made it home later that night. Following that experience, I was curious, and I tried to look up on the map online where it was. I was able to find the area, and I looked up the city. What I found out was that there had been a string of carjackings and robberies in the area. I'm pretty confident that that guy was going to try to either rob me or steal my car, maybe even something worse. This happened shortly after I first got my driver's license. I was about 16 years old back then. I was driving an old car that my parents didn't use anymore. I was really lucky to have a car that I could drive right after getting my license because I couldn't afford to buy one on my own. During that time, I had a job at a store about 15 minutes away from where we lived. I was glad that I was able to drive myself to and from work because in the past, I needed to get a ride from my parents. Probably two weeks or so after getting my license, I was driving home from work one night. I got off at 10 p.m., so it was probably a little bit past then. The roads weren't too busy anymore, and I took the highway back most of the way. When I pulled off of the highway to another road, a car pulled off behind me. But it wasn't until my next turn that I thought anything of it. I turned a little bit late onto that road. Not on purpose, but because that turn just kinda snuck up on me a bit. I was really new to driving and made little mistakes like that, so when I turned, the car behind me suddenly turned right after me. It was only then that I realized how strange it was. They would only do that if they were intentionally following me. I drove down the road with the car behind me. It wasn't right behind me or anything, just a normal distance. I had about three more turns to make before my street. Soon I made the first one. The car did the same. Each time I turned, I was hoping to see the car just keep driving, but it didn't. By the time I was getting close to my street, I was extremely worried. I wanted to call my parents and tell them what was going on. Unfortunately, I didn't have a cell phone at the time. I also didn't want to drive home. If I did, whoever was behind me would know where we lived. And I didn't know who this person was. I was debating what to do, but when my street came, I turned onto it. 
It was something that I instantly regretted because the car turned right after me. Our street was pretty quiet, there were only like 15 houses on it, and it was a cul-de-sac. Uh, as I got closer to my house, I knew that I wasn't going to turn into the driveway. When I got to the cul-de-sac, I drove around it and then went back down my street. The car behind me followed just as they had been the entire time. After I made it off of the street and back onto a slightly busier one, I knew that I had to think of something. I drove down that road for a little ways, and then decided that I would go to a busier area. The area that my house was in was pretty quiet. There was a lot of land and not as many businesses or people around in general, but I just wanted to get to a busier area. I would feel safer with more people around. Maybe I would drive all the way to the city, but I certainly was not going to stop anywhere around my house. I followed the return directions to my job. Like I said, I didn't have a cell phone, so that also meant that I could only go places that I already knew directions to. I didn't have access to a map or anything to guide me. I remember that I made it all the way back to my job and then turned into the parking lot. It was a shopping center with multiple stores in it. The car first turned in behind me, but then suddenly turned off and drove away. I was really surprised, but didn't take any time in driving as far as I could away from it. I went to the other side of the parking lot and took a route that wrapped around back to the highway that I needed to take to get home. When I drove home, I was very careful to look and make sure that I wasn't followed. I got home okay, and my parents were wondering why I was late. I told them about what had happened. They said that if that ever happened again, to go to a police station, which I wish I would have thought of, although I didn't know where one was off the top of my head and would have needed a map. After that, I got a phone only about a week later. Nothing remotely close to that has happened since.